concerning the legalization of cannabis. This is an issue that is important to people in my community. I've heard from many constituents about their interests, desires, and concerns related to the legalization of cannabis. I have heard from many people who are in favor of legalization. They would like to see this bill come into effect as law as quickly as possible. They are in favor because they themselves consume cannabis or because they are concerned about the negative effects of maintaining criminalization of cannabis in our communities. I've also heard from many people who are not necessarily opposed to legalization, but they have concerns. I hope to address these concerns today because I understand their concerns about youth using cannabis. I am a mother and I can recognize the concerns that are raised in that respect. And, and as I say that, I can feel my kids rolling their eyes at home. But, you know, as a parent, I worry about my children too. I understand they will make mistakes, but legalization of cannabis is not one of my top concerns for my children going forward. I also believe that through the legalization and regulation of cannabis, the concerns about cannabis consumption by youth or by people operating vehicles can be addressed. In many parts of my community, a spring walk through the park will bring the smell of lilacs and pot. I do not say this to make light of cannabis use, but simply to point out that it is very common in our community. And it is very common in a situation where it remains illegal. It is very clear based on a walk down our streets, but also on statistics the criminalization of cannabis is not keeping it out of the hands of people in our community, adults or youth. As I understand it, the statistics are that 21% of youth have used marijuana and 30% of young adults use it. Those are high numbers. And if the goal is to keep people from trying or using marijuana, the approach of criminalization has not worked. As has been stated in this place many times, but it bears repeating, the World Health Organization found in 2009 to 2010 that the level of Canadians under 15 who had tried cannabis was at a higher rate than for any other country studied. As well, in a 2013 to 2014 study of the WHO, Canada remained in the top five countries of 15-year-olds, and we were the number one of cannabis use among children 13 years of age or younger. Clearly, if a person is concerned about youth access to cannabis, the current system is not working. And here's the crux of the matter. The threat of a criminal record is not deterring youth from consuming cannabis. They are still doing it. However, once they have a criminal record, this could impact their future opportunities. It can close doors. And to what end? Under the new legalization, like alcohol, there will be regulations to prohibit the purchase and use of cannabis by youth. But, like with alcohol, we will not be threatening them with a criminal record. The criminal record brought only negative consequences without achieving its purported goal, which was to deter youth. Finally, we want to continue to collaborate with the provinces and territories to make sure that the public education campaign can also be done collaboratively and that we have access to all the same information. Another point here, comes to the nuts and bolts of working with youth. It is harder to have conversations and convey information about something that is hidden. Our government has announced 46 million for a public education program to accompany the legalization of marijuana. Having an open conversation is much more effective. Health Canada has published detailed information on the health risks of cannabis use on its website. And I encourage all Canadians to review it. It's there to be found. As we talk about youth, I am also concerned about the fact that people who are consuming marijuana are exposing themselves to risks that go beyond health issues related to consumption. For example, 
there is no way to trace source or ensure the quality of the marijuana they are purchasing. We have seen situations during the prohibition of alcohol where people consumed alcohol that had impurities, somehow made in a way that was not safe, and that would make them sick. Under our current legalized and regulated system for alcohol, we rarely hear of such incidents. In the same way, in a legalized market, we have more controls over the safety of production, and we have more control over the safety of the method of sale. Personally, I rather see people going to a store that is regulated to purchase their cannabis than to a drug dealer. The model of decriminalization fails to address consumer safety. That is not the other option here. The model of decriminalization has and maintains a lot of the harms associated with the prohibition of cannabis use. Decriminalization does not address the concerns that are raised by my constituents, and it leaves us with a gray zone. It leaves us with a market that remains in the hands of organized crime. I would like to share some statements made by the Centre for Addiction and Mental Health in Toronto from their cannabis policy framework. They say, under decriminalization, cannabis remains unregulated, meaning that users know little or nothing about its potency or quality. They go on to say, as long as cannabis use is illegal, it is difficult for healthcare or education professionals to effectively address and help prevent problematic use. The law enforcement focus of prohibition drives cannabis users away from prevention, risk reduction, and treatment services. And then their third point, decriminalization may encourage commercialization of cannabis production and distribution without giving the government additional regulatory tools. Those activities remain under the control of criminal elements, and for the most part, users must still obtain cannabis in the illicit market where they may be exposed to other drugs and to criminal activity. Our government is proposing a system that allows for the regulatory control of production, distribution, and sale. And along with the experts at CAMH, I support our government's position of legalizing and restricting access to allow opportunity to regulate cannabis and mitigate the risks. Our government has committed up to $161 million for training frontline officers on how to recognize signs and symptoms of drug-impaired driving. Whether legal or not, drug-impaired driving is happening in our communities. In 2008, the Canadian Association of Chief of Police unanimously urged the government of the day to make resources available for the training of drug recognition experts and for all officers in field sobriety testing. That plea resulted in no action from that government. In 2013, the Ch Canadian Association of Chiefs of Police asked the government to make available oral fluid testing technology. No action was taken by that government. Our government is listening to the concerns of law enforcement and providing the training, resources, access to technology, and legal authority to allow police across the country to provide them with what they need to keep our communities safe. Currently, Canada's non-medical cannabis industry is entirely criminal, meaning that all non-medical cannabis being sold or purchased in our communities is helping to put approximately $7 billion annually into the pockets of organized crime with upwards of $2 billion every year being spent trying to enforce our current ineffectual cannabis prohibition regime. Smart action is what is needed to drive down the black market for cannabis. With legalization and regulation, law enforcement resources can be used effectively and we can reduce the involvement of organized crime. For too long in my community and across the country, cannabis has been easily accessible among our youth who have been using it at record rates to the great profits of organized crime. I support Bill C-45 to enact the Cannabis Act to provide legal access to cannabis and to control and regulate its production, distribution, and sale. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments, Donald Abdi. Donald, member for Lévis-Lobinière. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. 
I listened carefully to my colleague across the way, and I'd like to ask her the following question. She said that she was concerned by the consumption of pot by children of 13, 14 years old. Now, in C45, it will be possible to have four uh, plants of, of this size in each house. Don't you think that our adolescents might uh, want to try to dry some of those leaves and, tr and try them out or give them to their friends? In this bill, access to cannabis will be widespread among youth, not only youth of 13, 14 years old, even children as young as seven years old. So can my colleague say if uh, there will be any amendments to that effect? Danforth. So first of all, it's not every house that's going to have all that many plants, but okay, if the people on that side want to say that, they have the right to do that. But the real question is that, you know, in many houses, there's alcohol. That doesn't mean that children are drinking alcohol all the time. Parents have to uh, monitor this. Adults in these houses need to manage things. But that's not what's being done in this house, with, uh, in this bill. What's being done in this bill is we're creating a system where it will be legal, but there will be rules to ensure that uh, children are protected. And what we see is that children under the age of 13 aren't affected. Now, it doesn't mean that children don't have access. It just means now, it just means that today they're going to get drugs from their drug dealer, which is much more dangerous. The Honourable Member for uh, 